So in terms of, you know, we talked about the effect that COVID is having in the U.S. Um, what is the effect that it is having on China's economy? Well, they're, they're locking down a lot. Um, I, I think it's used as an excuse that um, because they're doing things horrendously, right? They're shutting apartment buildings. People can't leave. And you, it looks to me, if I just step back and think, okay, well, what's the end result here? So they're getting rid of powerful billionaires and tech companies, not getting rid of them. They're just absorbing them. So they're becoming state-owned, right? So it looks like just across the board, across the economic spectrum, the state is using whatever it can. The notion of common prosperity, that kind of policy, that, that really means getting rid of anyone who's rich is not the party or anyone in the party we don't like. Um, so it's, it's common prosperity. It's using class warfare to justify, you know, stuff on a massive scale. Um, the common prosperity, well, you, we've got to lock you down. So to protect everybody, so what's not happening is, you know, that's hurting their economy. They're, they're not producing as much. Um, and there's less to spend on. So people are saving more and they're, they're saving more because they're not very optimistic. And that savings will be, I'm sure, absorbed in some one fashion or another, as we talked about earlier. So it's creating this grand kind of health crisis and um, kind of upswing in control and centralization of power. That's the deal. And so, uh, again, they're going to, you know, when things go, it's, it's the old saying, right? When things go, or things are rotten at home, <laughs> go, go, to, go somewhere else and, and see if you can make things better. That typically means um, you know, starting a war or foreign adventures or whatever it might be. So I don't see things as, uh, you know, I don't see COVID as an isolated event. I think it's uh, part and parcel of a larger well, so perhaps to wrap up the conversation today, how can uh, both America as a country and individual Americans protect themselves, you know, get themselves in a situation where the Chinese Communist Party is not going to succeed in their expansionist ambitions? Gosh, uh, that's a big question. Uh you know, at the macro level, I think it has to be, and you're seeing some of this, um, not just in America, but in Europe as well. You know, the West is seeing China as a more and more moving from competitor to adversary. And so this latest, you know, these, these revelations about, you know, sending encrypted data, you know, listening on uh, whether it's security or phones or, or you know, uh, computerized data that's going back to China. They're seeing that. Uh, that's now a reality. Now, how they, how, how the U.S. or the European Union reacts, the reaction seems to be trending towards much more adversarial than, you know, well, gee, you know, perhaps our present, our present administration accepted. Um, that's the exception. But um, as for individuals, you know, it's. America is, was built on small innovation, right? Small level, small business innovation. And, and so I would say, you know, it's, it's, it's all about buying local. It's all about investing in local companies. It's investing in your community, your, your local area that, that, you know, provides the capital, provides the market for, uh, that keeps, you know, keeps the dollars here, keeps the investments here and, uh, not buying things that are made, um, you know, by slave labor in, in some far off Chinese province is, is a good start. Um, unfortunately, as you all know, and as everyone knows, is the drivers of our economy, um, at least at the high level, are, are is the corporations and Hollywood. And um, I'm thinking of that Ricky Gervais quote. You know, well, you say you're woke, but uh, everything you make is uh, in sweat created by slave labor in, in Chinese sweatshops. So. You know, that was brilliant. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, the Golden Globes. But I, I think we have to go local. We have to do as much as we can by American. I know it sounds kind of hokey, but it's it's, it's true. Um, and uh, be aware of what you're buying, what you're not buying. Uh, at the, at the, and support your, support your, your neighbors and your communities and 
their businesses. Well, you can, I guess. Well, you can. That is that is definitely the message. Do it. Do it now, or else it won't. You won't be able to do it in the future. Seems that way. I think that's very important. trending that way. Yeah. It? Sure does. All right, James. Thank you so much for joining us today. That was, that was very interesting. Uh, for anyone uh, listening or watching, where can they go to follow more of your work? Uh, I write for the Epic Times. I sometimes blog on my blog, The Banana Republican, when I have time, um, thebananarepublican.com. But I, I'm on the Epic Times, and you can you can uh, access the Epic Times anywhere as well, epictimes.com. Right. So thanks so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us. It was great. Thank you. You know, his whole thing about buying American made me think of something I saw on Twitter the other day, which is the, you know, everybody is talking about because of Omicron, cloth masks aren't useful. You should be getting an N95 mask or mm -hmm. something like that. And someone had posted a photo of Nancy Pelosi's office had given uh, congressional staff uh free N95 mask. Someone posted a photo of it. It was made in China. Ah. It wasn't an N95. It was a KN95 mask that was made in China. And I was just thinking, you know, how many of these masks that we're all going to be going out and buying now or everybody's being encouraged to go out and buy are made in China? And uh, when we talked to that guy from Prestige, Prestige Ameritech, Ameritech, the American company that's trying to manufacture masks in the U.S., and he was talking about how essentially uh, his company had all been almost bankrupted several times by cheap imports from China and how they're trying to just flood the market again in the middle of the pandemic with cheap Chinese masks that American companies, and there are a lot of American companies that have been founded during the pandemic to essentially make surgical masks and N95 masks when we had a shortage because China completely shut down production to the rest of the world. And now those companies are being bankrupted by these Chinese companies that are flooding the market. And then Congress is buying Chinese-made N95 masks. Yeah, you can forgive them. They're all, what, the median age in the Senate is 65? They're old. They're out of touch. They don't know any better. The people running our country. Doesn't just, that make you feel good? I mean, it's just, it's so aggravating because there are American companies that are doing this. Like, yeah. Yeah. I know, but it costs slightly more to buy American. Yeah. I've used the ch Chinese surgical mask before too. Somebody gave me one that was one made in China. I always try to buy masks made in the US. But, but you bought a bunch of Korean ones too, right? Yeah. So I try to buy things that are not made in China. The kind of mask I was buying wasn't being manufactured by American companies at the time, but hope now they are. But now we could all get American ones. Yeah, yeah. They, they are now making like KN95, KF94 style masks in the US. But uh, the Chinese surgical masks, like the plastic part, it didn't even really work because there's a, like a nose piece that you're supposed to be able to like kind of fold over. Yeah. It wouldn't stay down. So it was kind of useless in terms of actually like keeping a seal around your face. Wonderful. So not only did Pelosi hand out Chinese-made masks, they were also probably ineffective. Well, I don't know about those ones. Well, But the FDA has, uh, over the last couple of years, revoked a bunch of emergency use authorizations to these Chinese mask companies because well, they good. found out that the masks weren't providing the level of protection they claimed that they were. There were also problems of counterfeit ones. And there yeah. were some, some of them that were uh, unsanitary. Yeah. So, you know, there's been a bunch of problems, but yeah. yet here we are. Well, so this is why figuring out how to buy things that are not made in China is so important. And we, we are working on we that. We are working on it. Yeah, we're working on a channel to help people find out how to buy things that are not made in China. Uh, you know, we're going to be doing things like product reviews of things that are not made in China. If you need to find a microwave or you need to find, I don't know, what other things... You need to find a pen that's not made in China. Well, even masks now. Like yeah, masks that are not works. made in China. You know, we can help you do that. So we're we're working on launching that channel this year. Yeah, yeah. This is something we're pretty passionate about, which is why you know we have our merchandise store, chinaincensored.tv slash merchandise. Uh, it was very difficult for us to set it up because we had to find a vendor who would not have mugs made in China, T-shirts made in China. It, it took us a lot of extra time and effort to find a vendor who would do that. And it's certainly 
cuts into our profit. I mean, with the mugs, we also, it was hard to find, we had to buy all the mugs ourselves, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So we, we had to make some sacrifices for it, but this is what we're passionate about. So hopefully it'll become easier as time goes on to find things that are not made yeah. in China. Well, especially when we get the show going sometime this year. Early this year? Let's, Early let's, this let's year. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is also why, you know, what you guys are doing to support us on China Uncensored and, and you know, our Patreon. We also have a Patreon for China Unscripted. Uh, it's helping us not only do these shows, but also to launch new shows that you guys are going to be interested in. Yep. So yeah, that was good cross promotion there. I like yeah. that.